This little finger plane is a prototype I made and in this video I'll make another one and recreate it. This one's a bit rough around the edges. It's only made from aluminium but it works perfectly well. I designed it in Shape of 3D to get a good feel of how it would look and while I was there I made drawings which I'll use later on as templates. I'll be making the plane from brass and I'm actually going to make two of them. I'll make one on the milling machine but the second one I'll make with basic tools just to show that you don't have to have heaps of equipment. I do realise that you can buy cheap finger planes and I believe that they're actually pretty good but where's the fun in that when you can make your own and design it exactly how you want? I've started by milling the brass down into a square blank which is 21 by 21 millimetres. Next I'll start milling out the centre and I'll start with this section at the front. I've marked it out roughly just to show you what I'm going to remove. Next I'll mill out the bed, the section that the blade lies on and that will be at 45 degrees. Nothing needs to be super precise as long as it's pretty close so I'll mark directly off the drawings. I also get to use my new scribe that my mate Corin makes. It's carbide tipped and it's honestly the best scribe that I've ever used and I'm not getting carried away when I say that. If you'd like to get one I'll put a link in the description, I don't get anything for it and I also paid for mine, just letting anyone know who may want to get the best scribe that they've ever owned. I could have used angle blocks but this is easily accurate enough for what I'm doing. I'm using an 8mm end mill which has a 10mm shank. The shoulder is interfering with the cut but these corners aren't needed so I can mill them down so far to give me a bit more clearance. Going back to when I started YouTube it was just a side hustle trying to build up a bit more business and now I owe any of my success to social media. One of the questions that I often get asked is how do I get started? It's such a constant question that a few big creators and colleagues of mine have put together the creator course. It outlines a step by step guide to building up a business on YouTube and social media. There's Cam from Blacktail Studio, Chris from Four Eyes Furniture, John from Lincoln Street Woodwork, Sam from DIY Huntress, Brad from Fix This Build That and of course course myself where I'll be doing a bonus live where I'll be sharing the filming editing and all the gear that I use to create content at over four hours along with live coaching sessions the goal at the end of this is that everyone should be able to generate a thousand dollars a month from your social media side hustle but if you want to join us the doors for enrollment will be closing this Sunday October the 29th at midnight so click the link in the description of this video and we'll see you there It's ready to start shaping, so next I'll glue a template onto one of the sides using thin CA glue. I've decided to put that plane aside for now and get started on the second one, and I'll get that one up to the same stage. I'll make the sides of the plane out of this 4.5mm thick brass. I'll make the infill pieces with this half inch brass bar. I need two pieces, one for the bed and a small piece for the toe. I 
I'm flattening all the faces that get joined together. A better fit should make it easier to solder them. I'm using a one, two, three block to keep all the infill pieces square. I reckon these blocks are just about one of the most useful things that you can have around your workshop. I use mine all the time and if you don't have any then I recommend them for sure. It's not pretty, but it works, so now I can start cleaning it up. Next I'll shape the profile, but before I do, and while the planes are still square, I'll mark and drill the holes for the pins that will hold the blade down to the bed. I also get to try out my new centre punch, also from Corin. You can see my full set here with three pinning punches and all of them are carbide with brass handles. I'll start to cut away the waste and while I do that I should talk about these small planes and explain that they are actually useful and not just a gimmick. They're mainly used by luthiers and I have a guitar build just about to start where I think that they may be useful. I've thought about making them for some time and with that next project just about to start this was the right opportunity. The file guide isn't essential, but they are awesome for keeping things accurate. Even though none of these faces are actually critical, but it's easier to keep things symmetrical, which will look better than having a wonky plane. I take off a corner, then reposition the guide, remove the waste, and then go again until I get down to the final shape. That only took a couple of minutes, much faster than using files, but I was still happy to make one with the files and show that it can be done with basic tools. Now I'll start shaping the sides. I'm going to angle them down this way, but also angle them in towards the toe. There's no reason for doing any of this shaping from now on other than just for aesthetics. We could just move on to making a blade and the body would function perfectly as it is. I'll do one with the file first, then the other I'll shape on the belt grinder. I'm pretty happy with how it's looking and how it is next to the other one to compare the difference. This one will be much quicker. I've angled the platen over on the belt grinder, which will make it super easy. They're beginning to take shape and they're looking pretty good. Next I'll start rounding them over and smoothing them out and also this one here I need to open up the mouth at the back of the toe. I did both of them with a file and got them up to the same stage. Next I'm going to put the finger holes in like on this prototype here. I did this with a Dremel and I did it quite crudely. I didn't even mark it out. But to make it more repeatable I'm going to do this on the belt grinder. And I'm doing it now especially with this one while I've still got a flat sole and something to reference off. I 
I wasn't 100% happy with how I had it positioned. I had it a little bit too far forward, so I reattached it off camera. I was pretty scared about doing this step, but I reckon it looks great, so now I'll do the rest of them. And I should also mention that these finger holds make a huge difference with the grip and how comfortable the plane is to hold. They're not perfect, but they're much better than I could have done freehand with a Dremel. Next, I'll start sanding them and getting them a bit closer to finish. They definitely need more sanding, but next I'll start shaping the curved sole on the radius plane. I'll glue on a template again and work from there. I'll work my way along the sole by filing facets in. That way I can see by eye that I'm filing parallel and evenly. When I've removed the waste, I can then smooth out the sole with some sanding. I'm happy with that, but next I need to radius in the other direction, this time across the sole. I'll do that again with facets to try and keep it even. I'll start by chamfering the outside edges, joining up the layout lines that I've just put on the sole and on the sides. Next I'll mark another set of lines, they'll stagger the high point in the last chamfer that I made and that will soften the curve a bit more. It's not difficult to do and it's a good method as the lines are very clear and easy to keep to. Next I'll smooth the facets out into a flowing continuous curve. I'll stick sandpaper on a piece of foam board which will have a bit of give and it should help to get a good smooth sole. The foam board has just the right amount of backing and it's doing a fantastic job and by the way I'm using 120 grit sandpaper at this stage. Next I'll move on to the blade. I was going to make the blade from scratch but on this first plane I just used this old reciprocating saw blade and it worked amazingly well so I'll use it again. I'll do a quick hardness test using these files. I start with a 40 Rockwell one and I see if that can make a scratch into the blade. It doesn't so I move on to the next one and I keep going until it does scratch into the surface. The 55 Rockwell file made the scratch, so I know the hardness is between 50 and 55, which is plenty good enough for this purpose. Another reason for using the reciprocating saw blade was to keep things simple for anyone that may want to make one of these planes and is scared off from heat treating. This way the blade is already hardened, so it's a step that can be skipped, although heat treating isn't difficult, and a small blade like this can be done without a forge or heat treating oven, as a blowtorch is more than suitable for the task. I'll square it up by flattening one face and an edge to start with. Um, for the other side, I'm going to try out my surface grinder for the very first time on a project. I've only just got it up and running. You certainly don't need a surface grinder. You can just sand the opposite side and actually you could even just leave it as it is. I'll mark out the opposite edge and bring it down to the final width.
I cut these stainless steel pins off camera. It's all starting to come together and next I'll make lever caps. I'll also make those from stainless steel and they're to hold the blade down to the bed. That fits in there perfectly, but I've got a bit of a problem with the flat bottom plane. I used the template off the curve plane and just basically chopped the bottom off. And in doing so, I've ended up with a pin too close to the sole. To fix it, I'll solder in a couple of small pieces of brass and re-drill the holes. I'm using low temperature solder, so I don't need to get the temperature up too high and to the point where it melts the solder that's holding the plane together. They're not perfect but I can live with them so I'll move on and I'll drill the two holes out again. This time I'll mark and drill each side separately. The lever caps need screws to push the blade down onto the bed and I'll make those from these M8 brass bolts. If you don't have a lathe then you'll need to get creative here. Maybe do something on your drill press or just use a stainless steel machine screw which would look fine. I'll just drill and thread a hole in the lever caps and that's all of the pieces made. I won't show too much of the sanding and polishing and even though I could have spent a lot longer than I did, it still took a good few hours. I reckon I could keep going at them, sanding them and polishing them, but you have to know when to stop and they are going to get used as well, so I reckon they're good enough. I just need to grind a bevel on the blades and sharpen them and then we can see if they actually work. I think they look pretty cool, but will they work? I'll try the flat sold one first on the edge of this pine. That works great, but the radius plane is the one that I really wanted and will be the one that I'll use the most. I'll try it out on this piece of camphor laurel. That 
That works amazing and the grain on this piece of figured wood is particularly tricky running all over the place. I'm absolutely thrilled with them and they were super fun to make. Hopefully it inspires you to make one too. If you enjoyed this video, you may enjoy one of my other plane making videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.